Welcome to our online physics lessons. It is teacher Nyangoya. The phone number is there and the email is there. So without wasting much time, uh, be serious, listen to the, uh, the teachings, take notes, and when you don't understand, you are allowed to replay the clip during your learning for purposes of understanding. So today, we are looking at a new topic, uh, and the topic is pressure. Pressure is a form one topic, and the specific objectives are, by the end of the topic, you as the learner should be able to define pressure and state its SI unit. You can be able to determine pressure exerted by solids. You can describe experiment to investigate factors affecting pressure in fluids. And then you can derive the formula given as pressure is equals to density times uh, G times H. Then uh, state the graph principle of transmission of pressure. That is Pascal's principle. Explain atmospheric pressure and its effects. State and explain the applications of pressure, solve numerical problems. In these objectives, the main content we are covering is the definition of pressure. Then we get pressure in solids, factors affecting pressure. We derive the formula, then we move to atmospheric pressure. But today, I will reach up to uh, derive atmospheric pressure. The other part will be completed in the next lesson. Pressure. What is the definition of pressure? Pressure refers to force acting perpendicularly per unit area. Force acting perpendicularly per unit area. The word perpendicularly can also be replaced with normally. So pressure refers to force acting normally per unit area. Since force is measured in newtons and area square meter, then the SI unit of pressure is the newton per square meter and the symbols are already shown there n per m square or the pascal one newton per square meter equals to one pascal so pressure is force acting perpendicularly per unit area or force acting normally per unit area. So pressure is force over area. When we are using symbols, we say P equals to F over A. Those are the symbols we use to, die, to write the formula of finding pressure. Now, force must be newtons, area must be in square meter, so that the answer will be newton per square meter. So if you want to find force, you make force here, the subject. So you multiply by A both sides, you have pressure times area. That is force. If you want to get area, it is going to do what? You make area here. Area goes that side. Pressure comes here. So area is force over pressure. Pressure in solids. Force exerted by a solid resting on a surface is equal to the weight of the object. Force exerted by a solid resting on a surface is equal to the weight of the object. So pressure equals to force over area of contact. Pressure equal to force over area of contact, where force is the weight of the solid. Maximum pressure is when the weight is acting on a small area of contact. Maximum pressure is equal to weight of the sorry divided by the minimum area. Minimum pressure, minimum pressure is weight of the sorry divided by maximum area. Factors affecting pressure in solids. There are two factors here. We have talked about force over area. So there it is force and area. So weight of the solid. If the area of contact between solid and surface is constant, then pressure increases with weight. The more the weight, the more the pressure with the exerts on the ground. 
area of contact is also another factor affecting pressure in solids. The smaller the area, the higher the pressure. If same force is applied, therefore pressure can be reduced by increasing the area of contact. Like wearing heel shoes and flat shoes. You know there, weight is constant. But when you wear heel shoes, sharp pointed shoes, uh, they exert more pressure on the ground because of small area. And if you wear flat shoes, uh, that is a, a, a bigger area and therefore you exert less pressure. We look at example. A block of, so of a soap, a soapstone of dimensions 4 meter by 2 meter by 3 meter is 48 kilogram. Is made to rest on a smooth horizontal surface. Calculate the minimum pressure it exerts on the surface and calculate the maximum pressure it can exert on the, on the surface. So you can draw the block with the dimensions. 4 by 2 by 3. Length with height. For us to get minimum pressure, minimum pressure, for us to get minimum pressure, minimum pressure is weight of solid divided by maximum area. So look at the dimensions. Which of the dimensions will give a maximum area? The side of 4, 2 will give us 8. The side of 4, 3 will give us 12. The side of 2, 3 will give us 6. So the side that will give us a minimum area, the side that will give us a, a minimum area is 3, 2. That which will give us maximum area is 4, 3. So let's move to minimum pressure. For us to get minimum pressure is weight over maximum area. The maximum area dimensions are 4 and 3. How do we get weight? The mass is 48. The gravitational field strength is 10. So 48 times 10 gives us 480. That is weight, which is force it exerts on the ground. The area is 403 because 403 gives us the maximum area. So we will get minimum area of minimum pressure of 40 newton per square meter. Let's get maximum area. Maximum area is when we have minimum area of contact. Maximum pressure, ma maximum pressure is when we have minimum area of contact, that is 3 and 2. So we get minimum, maximum pressure, weight over minimum area. 480 divided by 6, giving you 80. So look at the pressures now. For this, four, side 4, 3 gives us 40. Side uh, 2, 3 gives us 80. Another example. An object whose area of contact with the floor is 5 square meters exerts a pressure of 900 pascals. Calculate its mass. You get it? You get the mass. So it's like finding weight and weight is force. You know, force is pressure times area. So 900 times 5 will give us force. But that force is weight. So the answer we'll get here is force. If we divide it by G, we will get the mass. So we this multiply by that will give for 500 Newton. That is weight. Now get mass. It is dividing by 10, giving you 450 kilogram. A question comes in. Trucks with which carry Heavy loads have many wheels. Explain. Trucks which carry heavy loads have many wheels. Explain. Many wheels increase the area of contact with the ground, thereby reducing pressure exerted on the road. This prevents damage of the roads by trucks. I don't know whether you ever seen where trucks pass that road. Uh, 
it gets damaged very fast depending on the pressure they exert on the ground. So many wheels increase area of contact, that is the marking point. And what does that area do? Reducing pressure exerted on the road. This prevents the damage of the roads by trucks. Look at this. A block of copper, density is given, 9 gram per cubic centimeter, measures 5 by 3 by 2. Given that G is 10 newton per kilogram, then we see what we are going to determine. So 5 by 3 by 2. Determine maximum pressure. Maximum pressure. So for maximum pressure, we need minimum area. And therefore it should be upright, side 3 and 2. That is for maximum pressure. So it is weight of a minimum area. But how do we get weight? You know what? What we are given here is the density of the block. And we can get the volume of the block. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 times 2 is 30. Density is mass over volume. Density is mass over volume. So we have got... Uh, mass as density times volume so it's going to be density times volume that's why we have placed here density times volume then multiply mass now this is mass then now multiply by g to get weight then over minimum area so 9000 is already density in grams per cubic centimeters converted to kilogram per cubic meter multiplied by the area must, the, the volume must be converted to cubic meters, which is actually 30 times 10 is power of negative 6. Um, uh, yeah, uh, maybe you don't understand 10 negative 6. It is 30 over a million. 30 divided by a million to convert that one to cubic meters. Then multiply by 10. Then you divide by minimum area. Also, this one is 6. E divided by 10,000, giving you square meters. When you do that, you get pressure of 4,500 newton per square meter. Now, this next question will be minimum pressure. Minimum pressure will be weight divided maximum area. So weight is 2.7, then divide by maximum area. The side that gives you maximum area, the side that gives uh, that gives you maximum area is uh, the one of uh, I think it should be the one of 5 and 3 giving you 15 that's what we have here as 15 times 10 negative 4 you get that one another question for the purposes of revision it is painful if one tries to lift a heavy load by a thin string you have a heavy load and you are lifting using a thin string there is a small area of contact with the fingers when a thin string is used. As a result, more pressure is generated and this is painful. So take a thin string, tie a brick and try to lift. Take a thick string and try to lift. You will discover for a thin string it is very painful when you try to lift because the area of contact is small. Therefore, the brick exerts more pressure, and more, more pressure is generated, and this is painful. So you have a question. Some sample questions. A pickup carrying stones weighs 40,000 Newton. The weight is evenly spread across the four tires. It should be tires. The area of contact of each tire with the ground is 0 0.05. Calculate the pressure exerted by each tire on the ground. Pressure is force over area. So do it. A thumb is used to push pin into a piece of wood. Explain terms of pressure why pressure on wood is greater than the pressure on the thumb. We are pressing it down. Talk about area of contact. Then 
I think I've explained it before. An elephant of mass, 2,800 kilograms, has feet of an average area of 200 square centimeters. A vulture of mass, 12 kilograms, walk beside the elephant on a muddy area. The average area of the feet of the vulture is 2 centimeters square. Which one is likely to sink? Then explain your answer. Such questions you require to calculate. Find pressure for the elephant. Find pressure for the vulture. Which among the two can sink? The one that exerts more pressure. Then you are able to explain your answer. A guard standing upright exerts a pressure of 15,000 newtons per square meter on the floor. Even that the total area of contact of shoes and the floor is 0 0.02 square meter, determine the mass of the girl and determine the pressure she would exert on the floor if she stood on one foot. I think uh, our, last, uh, our last question on pressure on solids, a block of copper density is given, measures 10 by 6 by 4, even that the force of gravity is 10, Determine maximum and minimum. With those assignments, just pause whenever when you find the assignment, do it, and then uh, you move to the next. Having done uh, about pressure in uh, solids, we need to move to pressure in liquids. Pressure in liquids. But I could wish you do all the assignments of pressure in solids. And if you, you have a way of storing the clip, you watch the next lesson of pressure in liquids. But if you are able to watch the two clips at the same time and understand, no problem. You can replay. Pressure in liquids. Factors affecting pressure in liquids. Number one is depth of the liquid. Pressure in liquids increases with depth. This is the reason as to why walls of a dam are thicker at the bottom than at the top. Thick walls at the bottom of the dam withstand the high pressure due to the water at the bottom. Pressure increasing with depth of liquid explains why a diver at the bottom of the sea experiences more pressure due to more weight of the water above him than the diver near the top of the surface. This is a dam. Thicker walls at the bottom simply because pressure exerted at the bottom here is greater than the pressure at the top. Density of the liquid also matter. Density of the liquid also matter. But before we go there, I think I have a simulation to talk about that. We have this. We have water in a container. That is water. We want to measure pressure every point. Is a pressure gauge here. We want to measure. Let me remove the atmospheric pressure. It is reading zero zero. We have a ruler here. Yes, not the, the dimensions. Yes, read. Then we measure the pressures we move down. At the top here, pressure is 0 0.4. When we move to 1 meter as we are going down, pressure is 6.1. Move down 2 meters. Pressure is 15.6. Go down at the bottom, pressure is 25.4. So somebody at the bottom here experience more pressure due to the amount of water above here. When you go up, pressure here is 16.3, 15.9. Look at what's happening as we start from the top, look at what's happening to the magnitude of the pressure. See that? So, pressure increases with depth. Number two, we want to look at the fluid.
we want to look at the fluid. We were looking at uh, water. So I will start with gasoline. We we'll start with gasoline. Varura here. Now let me have dimensions. Grid here. Then I put the atmospheric pressure off. That is gasoline. What is the pressure at one meter? 5.4. Higher. What is the pressure of water at that? 7.7. .7. What is the pressure of honey? 11 point. I don't know whether you are noting something. Look at the density. The density of gasoline is 700 kg per meter cubed. Pressure here is 5.4. As we increase the density, what happens? We are increasing the density. What happens with the pressure here? We increase the density. Pressure also increase. Increase. Increase in density. Increases spray. Hope you are seeing. The values of density are increasing. We can also change the level. Go to the bottom. So at the bottom, for the case of gasoline, you will experience 18.9. For water, density of water is 1,000. Eh? 27. You see? For honey, 38. So what are we saying now? That pressure, number one, the first factor, depth, where we saw as it goes down, pressure increases with depth. Number two, pressure increases with increase in density. We have considered two identical, we have considered uh, uh, the level here, and you have seen increase in density. Increases pressure. 700, 18.6. 1420, 37. Consider two identical cylinders filled with water, 1,000, and glycerine, 1260 respectively. Pressure at point B is greater than the pressure at point A. This is what we have said. Water and glycerine. Pressure at this point here and pressure at this point here. Glycerine and water. In this case, I have honey. Instead of gas, gasoline, I have honey. Honey, the pressure is 30 what? 36.8. For the case of water, the case of water is 27.2. What does it say? One of greater in here experiences more pressure than here. So density of a liquid also matters. That's why we are saying pressure at point B is greater than pressure at point A. To demonstrate variation of pressure with depth. So, consider tall thin with holes A, B, C and equally spaced on one side along a vertical, this one here, A, B, C. You have got all A, B, C. When the tin is filled with water, the water jets out of the holes with that from uh, A thrown farthest, followed by B, then lastly C. The jets, the lever at which they get out, one here goes very far, followed by this one, depending. Pressure increases with the depth. This means pressure 
of water at A is greater than pressure. Pressure at A is greater than pressure at B. B pressure is greater than at C, but A is the greatest. Hence, pressure in liquid increases with depth. So you have seen the respective heights. And I've also shown you the simulation that pressure increases. If any of I place a ruler here, so that we can be able to measure as well. As you come down, we measure the depth coming down like this. So, yeah. We have seen that, huh? measure the depth this way as we go down. Very good. To demonstrate variation of pressure with depth and density of liquids, so consider a transparent glass vessel filled with water and a thistle funnel connected a YouTube filled with colored water to some level dipped into it. This one. You have water here, and you have colored water here. It is observed that the deeper the funnel goes below the surface of water, the greater the difference in levels of water in two limbs of the YouTube. This is due to increase in pressure with depth. When glycerin is used in place of water, it is observed that the same depth, the difference in levels, is greater than when water is used. This is because glycerin is denser than water, and therefore it is pressure at the same depth is higher than that of water. So we are saying for the case of gasoline, uh, it has more pressure at the same level compared to that of water, simply because of density. That's why we are saying, inserting this one inside, the level of the water rising here. For, for gasoline, it will go up more than the water. This height here will be greater than the one of water. To demonstrate that pressure at equal depth acts equally in all directions at equal depth like that see here like for example i have here then now i move it across 17.7 17.7 17.7 on the same line only that here i am and here 17.7 17.7 so consider thin with two similar holes on each side at the same height as shown alongside when the thin is filled with water it is observed that water travels out of the holes equal horizontal distance from the can therefore pressure exerted at equal depth is the same in all directions if you have a jet here, another jet here, if the heights are the same, the jet will move the same distance when you measure it from the bottom of the container. Implying that pressure is the same in all directions at the same depth. Fluid pressure formula. Fluid pressure formula. And this is where I want you to listen. We have said pressure in solid is given as force per unit area, which is force over area. But we want to know now, fluid takes the shape of the container. So how do we measure pressure in fluids? Consider a container with cross-sectional area, A, filled with a liquid of density, rho, to the height, H, as shown alongside. This is what we have. There is water here up to a certain height. There is a liquid of a given density that is radius here, which can give us the cross-section area. So, 
we start. What pressure will this container exert on the ground? Pressure is always equal to force over area. And uh, what is the force? It's going to be the weight of this container it exerts on the ground. So which is equal to the weight. And the weight of this one, we get the weight of the liquid inside here. Divided by the cross-sectional area that is in contact with the ground. Yeah? So, weight of the liquid divided by the cross-sectional area by R square. Now, how do we get the weight of the liquid? We always know that the density is equal to mass over volume. We got, must get mass of the liquid. After getting the mass of the liquid, then we get the weight of the liquid. Mass is density times volume. Mass is density times volume. But how do we get volume as well? Volume is always equal to cross-sectional area times height. Cross-sectional area times height. So cross-sectional area times height will give us volume. Then we multiply by density will give us mass. This is volume. Multiply by density will give us mass from here up to H. That is mass. Then multiply by G to get weight. I want you to understand there well. AH is volume, cross-sectional area. If you are to find a volume, you are to take by R square height, cross-sectional area times the height. You get volume. If you are to get mass, it's density times volume. So you have volume as AH multiplied by density to get mass of the water and multiplied by G to get the weight of the liquid. Where AH is the volume of the liquid. Now, Pressure is equal to the whole of this divided by area. Because area is the same, area cancels out and you remain with height times density times pool of gravity. Therefore, pressure in fluids is given as height times density times the pool of gravity. This is the fluid pressure formula. Now that you are not going to find the area of the fluid, because it has no shape. So you only know, irrespective of the container it will be in, just measure the height times the density of that liquid, multiply by G, you get the pressure it exerts on the ground. From the formula, it is clear that pressure in fluids does not depend on cross-sectional area of the container holding the liquid. It only depends on the depth. The depth. Example. A diver working underwater is 15 meters below the surface of the sea. Calculate the pressure due to the water experience. Look at the sea. Can you be able to know the area of contact of the sea? It is just the sea uh, covers a large surface area. So for you to know the pressure experienced by this person, it is height times density times pool of gravity, 15 and the density of uh, uh, sea water, then the multiply by 10. The answer is 154, 500 Newton per square meter. Look at this one. The figure below shows a liquid in a pail. There is a liquid here. So how do you get pressure? Just get the height. The area here is not the same as area here, so there is no cross section area you take care of. So it is height which is actually 0.5 centimeters which is 0 0.45 meters multiplied by the density of the liquid multiplied by g so 0 0.45 times 790 times 10. what we uh, said is that height must be in meters density must be in kilogram per meter cubed and the g must be in newton per kilogram the answer is 3555 Newton per square meter. So pressure in liquids is given as height times density times pure of gravity. Some revision questions. Suggest a reason why a paid manufacturer prefers the shape shown to the other shapes. I don't know. No na pale green aka. If why do you think it is like this? Apa kwenda ju. Ime panuliu. 
you don't want to increase the height yeah you say to reduce the height of the liquid or to reduce the height of the pail but maintain the capacity this reduces the pressure exerted by the liquid at the bottom of the pail because as it goes up it can carry more water but the height takes the height to increase you have to carry more capacity but the pressure you want to exert on the ground entirely rests on the height that question is tricky and you need to know how to answer it to reduce the height of the pail but maintain the capacity this reduces the pressure exerted by the liquid at the bottom of the pail another question calculate the pressure exerted by 76 mm coram of mercury given that the density of mercury is 13.6 so convert this to meters in the 0.76 convert to this to kilogram per meter cubed is going to be 13600 then multiply by 10 you get 103 360 newton per square meter a coram of glycerin 8.2 meters high a coram of c 10.8 meters high a coram of mercury 0.76 meters high and a coram of fresh water 10.34 high exact the same pressure at the bottom of a container arrange these substances in decreasing order of densities in decreasing order of their densities which one has that higher density look at this it, it depends on the heights glycerin it is 8.2 see water 10 that means it has got less the density of glycerin is greater than the density of water yeah you know pressure is the same pressure is height times density times pull of gravity so uh, we want to look at density and height so if we have got less height then it implies density is high if we have got more height then it means density is low so we want to start we want to start with the one which has got the minimum height 0.76 mercury followed by 8.2 followed by 10.08 followed by 10.34 mercury glycerin sea water fresh water pascal's principle the principle of transmission of pressure once again i've said this is more content you only play to the level you are able to understand then the following day you get to another level so we move to pascal principle This is a topic that can be taught for almost uh, two weeks but I want to combine it in one clip but you will be understanding it as you will be replaying the clip Pascal principle the principle of transmission of pressure in liquids Pascal's principle states that pressure applied at one part in an enclosed liquid is transmitted equally to all other parts of the enlarged liquid of enclosed liquid supposed to be enclosed liquid so demonstrating pascal's principle this one if you have got water placed inside here then you have got a piston you push the liquid inside when the plunger is pushed in water squirts out of the holes with equal force this shows that pressure generated by the piston on the water is transmitted equally to all other parts we cannot say that that which goes here is greater than that which goes there greater than no they go out at the equal rate so pascal principle states that pressure applied at one part in a liquid is transmitted equally to all other parts of the enclosed liquid applications of pascal's principle pascal principle is applied in the working of the hydraulic machines these machines include a hydraulic press used to compress textile products like blankets for packing hydraulic lift hydraulic brake system so let's take hydraulic press hydraulic press here 
control to press like this one here. And to do away with this, set. And I take this. This is a liquid here. Liquid is inside here. Take 250 kilogram and place it inside here. You see the level of the water, the level here rising. You see, take another insert here. You see the level now here goes down, here it goes up. So, let's get what is the pressure here. The pressure at this point 5.0. What is the pressure at this point? It's at this point 5.0. Pressure the exact at this point is 5.0. It's transmitted equally to all other parts that will make this liquid. So and it's the same goes to the other side. Take this one, add there. You can now see liquid goes up. Make this one to be 10. I think you have seen that. Pressure applied at one point is transmitted equally to all other parts. Hydraulic lift, hydraulic brake system. Let's look at the pressure transmission in hydraulic machines. Note that pressure at the same level in the liquid is the same as seen in earlier. So consider the hydraulic machine below consists of a piston and that. This is it. I've already shown you here, small piston, large piston. So, pressure exerted on the liquid by the piston, S, here, is given by the force S. So, if we want to find pressure here, it is going to be the force it exerts here, divided by the cross-sectional area of the piston here. So pressure at S is equal to force divided by the area S. So by Pascal's principle, pressure at S here could be equal to the pressure at L here. You know whether we can show that one there. Place this one here. Place this one. Place this one. If I was to draw, you know. Yes. Can I take this now? Pressure at this point here is 14.2. That is pressure at this point here. 14.2. Pressure at this point here. is 19.3 pressure at this point here is 19.3 what are we saying by pascal's principle pressure at s here is equal to pressure here so we say pressure at s is equal to pressure at l how do you find pressure at l here it is force at l divided by the area at L. So, Fs should equal to Fl over Al, according to Pascal's principle. Example, the figure below two masses placed on a lift on light pistons. The pistons are held stationary by the liquid whose density is 0 0.8, determine the force F. So here, let's see now, can see here. You have this one here. Blessed pressure at this point 
should equal the pressure at this point here. Draw a straight line. I want you to understand this. This one was placed here. It made a liquid to go up past the level. So we can say pressure at this point is equal to pressure at this point. So if you were a diver and you are here, you will experience pressure due to the liquid above you. Yeah. And pressure due to the liquid that has been transmitted here. So let's get pressure here. It is going to be 60 multiplied by 10 divided by 0 0.008 is changed to square meters equals to this point here pressure due to the liquid plus pressure uh, the force divided by the area at B. So you get 1.8 times 800 times that gives us pressure due to the liquid. Then plus force B divided by 0.0025. When you go ahead with this, you end up with 187.14. Just follow it closely. Follow it. You can pause the clip and follow this working closely with the notes I will be able to send to you. Now, we move to another question. The area of the larger syringe in an experiment is 18 and the smaller syringe is 3. A force of 2 newton is applied on a smaller piston. Find the force produced on the larger piston. So you say force at this point, pressure at this point here, is equal to pressure at this point here. So force at S divided by area at S is equal to force at L divided by area at L. So force at S is 2 divided by the area 0 0.003 equals to FL divided by 0 0.0018. When you go ahead, this one comes here, you substitute, you will discover that you produce a force of 12 newton here. Having applied 2 newton here, you will produce a force of 12 newton. Diagram below shows a U-tube filled with two liquids, X and Y, with the density of Y is 1 and determine the density of X. The same thing. Look at this. Just identify one point here and say pressure at this point is equal to pressure at this point. So what is the pressure at this point? It's going to be Density, height, times density, times G. What is the, about this point here? It's also going to be uh, height, times the density of the liquid, times G. So the height here is 0 0.4, times density of this liquid, times 10. This one is... 0 0.3 times the density of this one up. We are already told one of the liquids Y is 1, which is actually a thousand. We are given the density of this one as a thousand. So 0 0.3 times a thousand times 10. And the answers will be after substituting all these, divide by this, divide by this, divide here, you get the density of the liquid as 750 kilogram per meter cubed. So the main point is you identify two regions, straight line from here up to here. Pressure at this point is equal to pressure at this point. Like I've already shown you here, that pressure at this point here, you transfer it up to this point here, the pressure will be the same. 19. Hydraulic brake system. How does it work? One thing you have discovered is that in this question, 
you apply a small force you on the small piston you provide a large force in the bigger piston the same thing applies to on the hydraulic brake system Hydraulic brake system uses the principle of transmission of pressure in liquids. That is Pascal's principle. It's operation. Look at the brake. We have a pedal. We have a brake fluid. Then inside there we have a slave cylinder. We have a brake lining. We have a return spring. We have a drum. We have a pivot brake shoe. And this continues to water wheels. So how does it work? When a small force is applied on the brake bed, apple, kikanyaga, you push this liquid backwards. It pushes the piston of the master cylinder inwards. This produces a pressure that is equally transmitted this liquid to the pistons in the slave cylinder. The pressure generates a force which pushes the piston on the slave cylinder outwards, pushed outwards. When they push outwards, what happens? The piston then push the brake shoe. So, brake shoe. And therefore, the brake lining outwards. The brake lining touches and stops the wheel drum. That stops rotation. When you remove the your leg from here to apply the force, the return spring pulls the brake shoe back into the original position after force on the brake bed has been removed. What are the properties of the hydraulic brake fluid? should not corrode parts of the system and it should not be highly incompressible. It should have a low freezing point and a high boiling point. Next time we shall look at atmospheric pressure and we want to stop there.